the Division of Developmental Disabilities is on a path to inclusion and employment for working age adults. I'm Ed Holan and you're watching DDTV where we bring you news and information that affect your life. Our correspondent Emily Rogers has been following the stories of two young women and their families as they make the journey toward work, inclusion and greater independence. Since the early 1980s, our estate has promoted integrated employment for adults with developmental disabilities. As a part of this effort, DDD requires an employment plan for those who receive day services. The plan is called Pathway to Employment. Director of DSHS Division of Developmental Disabilities, Linda Rolf, explains. Pathways to Employment is about opportunities. There's a huge opportunity in the workforce there aren't enough workers to do all the jobs that are necessary. Employers are going to have to re-strategize about how to get workers, redo jobs, reframe jobs, and it's a perfect opportunity for people with disabilities to enter a workforce. It's also about um, being respectful of people with disabilities and the job skills, uh, job strengths that they have. Alexa is now 22 years old, has just moved into her own apartment and works at Starbucks. When she was born, the last thing her mother, Susan, thought about was what kind of job or career her daughter would have. We were told that she probably wouldn't. Not, a lot of kids with Down syndrome um, never progress past laying on blankets, you know, or, or were more like babies, you know, or toddlers, young. Not, but they didn't walk, they didn't talk, a lot of them. Um, there were many years when teachers would say, you're doing this for yourself, you know, you're doing this for you because, you know, um, you're not, you know, inclusion isn't the best thing for Alexa. She should be in a segregated classroom. And today I can now look people in the eye and say it was the right thing. It was the right thing for her and the right thing to do. Alexa's mom isn't the only one redefining independent living. The parents of 22-year-old Lacey are also challenging old ideas about the risks of inclusion. Their only regret is that they didn't start earlier. I, well, I totally freaked out when I found out about the working age adult policy. Because I just couldn't see how she would be able to go to work. She needs 24-hour care. She's very, has significant needs. And I just didn't see how she would be able to do that. After thinking about it, we realized that the pathway to employment was really not that bad of an idea. That we didn't want anything different for Lacey as everybody else wants for their other children. She shows me every day as she's exited school. She shows me every day she's a whole lot more capable than I thought she was. To help Lacey find employment, her parents looked for different ways she could work. Since there's not a lot Lacey can physically do, they had to be creative. We decided to start a business that Lacey could own and run so that her hours were her and that she would be able to be her own boss. And she liked balloons a lot, and she loves people. Lacey loves people. So we figured if she did balloons, she could help go deliver them and help blow them up and, and do all of that. And that didn't really work out. And then we went on to thinking she'd like a vending machine because she likes noise and watch things fall down. But that ended up being too difficult for her to move her hands and to be able to get things open and stuff. So then we went on to... a a community awareness presentation where she would go to elementary schools with her equipment and show mm. them the different equipment that helps her throughout the day. And again, that didn't work out well. And that's when her dad came back with the idea of her having this golf cart business. And This is how Lacey's car looked when we first brought it home. And then this was Lacey's actually first paid earned dollar. The whole concept behind her business is advertising and promotions for using her golf cart. It's got an outdoor LED m computerized moving message board that has graphics and functions on it. It took a whole team of people to help inspire us, help us walk us through all the different parts of it, from the, how it would affect her SSI, how, what part of Department of Vocational Rehabilitation, what part they would do, what part they wanted us to do. and. It's been very successful. It's been wonderful. And the other great thing about it is that Lacey's earning money, she's paying taxes, and she does all of that like anybody else without her mom around. This may sound like a lot of work to some people, but according to Alexa's mom, Susan, more and more families are figuring out creative solutions. You know, I just would expect that I'm going to have to help all my kids if 
find a job. And so Terry and I thought, um, we'll help Alexa. I don't think we can expect the system to find them the job and the system, you know, maybe we can get the system to support them because Alexa does have job support and that's really been great. Um, but, you know, I think that we're going to have to really, as parents, be the ones that's going to help our kids find jobs. I asked other parents for their thoughts on employment and inclusion. Make the assumption, as our state has decided this last year, that people with developmental disabilities can work. Dan uh, graduated from high school in uh, June of 1990, and one month before that, May uh, 1st, 1990, he started his employment at Microsoft Corporation. He was there for 14 and a half years uh, before he passed away. He was the fastest mail sorter and the most accurate that in the mail room and he um, sorted Bill Gates mail and it, you couldn't talk with Dan for more than a minute without finding out that he worked for Microsoft. This was something that was extremely important to him. Establishing the expectation is probably the most important. Networking is the second most important. Uh, Kari has enjoyed her job with Puget Consumer Co-op for 14 years through supported employment. It's worked well for her, it's worked well for her mother, and it's worked well for me. I, I think that we have to feel in here the value of our kids and that they can work. Uh, and when you do that, I think you believe in them. Brendan, he, he graduated from high school at age 21 and he started work just after his 22nd birthday. I guess I just couldn't imagine him not working, no matter what anybody else said. A concern that some families have is that inclusion and employment aren't possible for their son or daughter. They're afraid that pre-vocational and community access services are being taken away. I asked Shaw Seaman at DDD if this is true. Community access and pre-vocational services are not going away. Um, their focus has changed, and in fact it's been changing for years. There's been a gravitation for these services away from sheltered workshops and into community integrated employment. Community access will still be available for people over 62 years old that, uh, that choose not to work. And pre-vocational services primarily may continue to be used yes. for people as a pathway towards community integrated employment. This policy is about not writing people off um, as incapable or unable of achieving employment in integrated settings. It's about giving everyone a chance to contribute to their communities through employment. As parents with children with disabilities, we think we have to do everything for them. And by doing that, we're, we're setting them up for failure because they get used to that and then so they don't expect things of themselves, nor do we expect it of them. And we're not preparing them for the workforce. Just start early. Start, you know, like by the time when they're around 12, you know, start really thinking about and figuring out what they like to do and, and what the vision is for them. And hopefully the vision is that they're going to have a job, you know. And I think the vision should be that they're living on their own with support. But that's my vision for people with disabilities. Um, again, as, as typical a life as possible. Alexa and Lacey's families are happy to see their daughters on pathways to employment and to true inclusion. Excellent story, Emily. It's good to see adults with developmental disabilities finding jobs and gaining independence. Let's hope everyone who wants to work finds the same success on the pathway to employment. That's it for this edition of DDTV the most trusted source for news and information that affect your life.